Hi there, this is Art and Such with my Rainbow Loom tutorial for Grandpa Munster from the Munsters. For this pattern, you're going to need black bands, white bands, and gray bands. Although you might um, be inclined to use red for the wraparound piece, that's up to you. I would also suggest a skin tone, but you can use white for the face if you like and for the hands. As well, I'm going to have a couple of small black beads that I'll be threading on for the eyes using a piece of dental floss. You can also use a thin wire or a needle and thread. Um, and originally I used a little gold bead here, but I'll show you how to do this using a band um, and it sort of translates into the same thing for the bead, but I'll explain that a little later. You'll need a hook and a holding hook, your loom in the offset configuration. A couple of c-clips and I think that is everything um, yeah so the only other thing I want to make note of is if you do want grandpa's torso to be a little bit thicker you can use a larger loom and add an extra row of black on either side or you could also use more a uh, larger number of bands on the sections going down in the middle so that's something you can play around with if you like Let's start by doing our arms. We're going to take two skin tone bands and we want to wrap them onto the hook one, two, and three times. And we're going to take two black bands together, put them on the end of the hook, and slide your wrapped piece over. And then we want to put this onto seven more sets of double black bands. So two bands together, slide it through. Our total is going to be eight, so that was the second one, and this is the third, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. You can leave this where it is or put it on a separate hook and we're going to do the same arm in the same way. So we have two skin tone bands wrapped on the hook one, two, three times and pulled onto eight sets of double black bands. make a note for you here the legs most of this is going to be done using sets of three bands so that they're a little thicker than the arms but you can keep it in sets of two if you prefer we're going to make the feet first though and for the feet for the shoes we take two black bands wrap them one two three times pull them onto three black bands and onto th another three black bands We're going to put these all into a doubled over single. So take a block, stretch, twist, bring it back onto itself, end of the hook, and slide your foot through. This gives a little bit of a bend there. And now it goes on to eight sets of triple bands. So you're going to use three bands together. I think this time around I am just going to use two. We'll see if that makes a difference and saves us some bands. But for a thicker leg, um, and when that will look like the original here, it's sets of three, eight sets of three. One set, two sets, three, four, five, six, seven, 
and eight. I'll show you the difference here in a minute. Okay, so this one had sets of double bands and this one had sets of triple bands. You can see it's a little bit sturdier, a little stiffer, and a little thicker with the three. But either way, it will be okay. We're gonna make our other leg the same way. Two black bands wrapped one, two, three times around, pulled onto three block bounds. Onto another three block bounds. And onto a doubled over single. And then once more, the choice is up to you. You can use single bands or double bands here. Uh, sorry, double bands or triple bands. And we're gonna do eight sets. The reason I'm kind of giving this option is, I know black is like one of the most useful and popular colors and they get used up really quickly. So if you, if you wanna save some bands while you're doing this, this is a good place, a good place to cut back there a little bit. Six sets, seven, and eight. And we are gonna make, I'll just tell you now, we're gonna be making the head, or sorry, the body, and then the head, and then we're gonna add on the last couple of pieces. So let's go to our loom. And we're gonna start with two white bands and take them both and put them on the first peg in the center and bring it to the second peg down in the center. Take two white bands and come from the second center to the second right here and two from the second center to the second left. Okay, we're gonna come down on the center row one, two, three, four, five more times with double white bands. So this will take you to your seventh peg down in the center. And then from there, we're gonna switch to black and we're gonna come down one time with the double black bands. On either side, we're gonna be using whites and starting to double band from the second peg down. One, two, three, four, five times. And we're gonna do this on each side, or on both sides, I should say. So this is gonna end just below where our center row ended. And we've got double blacks right at the bottom there again. Oh, another thing I can tell you, um, you can see the inner part here is very square. If you want to put black on these bottom two sets, you can do that and that will kind of make the center, like his shirt, a little bit rounder. So the bottom most sets of white on either side, you can put those as double blacks if you want um, less of a square look and more of a triangular one. Okay, so this is our layout so far. And we are going to put on our legs. So take two block bands, put them on the end of your hook and slide one leg over. This will go down from your eighth peg on the left side, on the close side, to your eighth peg in the center. We wanna do this across to the other side. So it's gonna mirror it, eighth center to the eighth side. And we can put our arms down on the second pegs down on either side. Let's take a single block, go to the eighth peg down in the center. We've just put our legs on and we're going to wrap a cap on. So put it on, twist it again. Again, we want it to go around about three times. 
and we're going to lay out our holding bands. So the bottommost one is going to be black. This is going to go across your seventh pegs down. You don't need to double it over because we want them to be a little loose and chubby here. And the six pegs are going to be covered with a white band. So we're making little triangles by stretching it across and bringing it up over the center. And we have two more white triangle bands, which will bring us up to the, well, it will bring us up to the second peg down. We can stop once we get to that one. Okay, so we are almost done for the body. We just need to do our slide extension to give him the outer part of his um, of his coat. So we're going to grab a black band, wrap it once and twice, and put it onto five sets of double black bands. Take the bands that are on your hook and put them over the arm, the second peg down. It doesn't matter which side you do because we're going to do the same for the opposite side. And go to the bottom piece of that side extension. You're going to find that first wrapped band. Put your hook through and pull that to your, I think that's our seventh peg down. Yeah, so it's going to sit just above the one that's holding the leg on the peg above that. And because we don't want our half of our body to be, a big chunk of our body to be sticking out at the side, we'll need to connect this by taking a piece out of each chain and pulling it over the corresponding pegs that are, that are in between here. So we have four pegs to connect to and four chains to pull from. And then we're gonna make one for the other side. Single block, wrap twice, pull onto five sets of double black bands. And in a minute, I'm just gonna tune my loom here so that it's easier to get this on. Sometimes just a different perspective or a different reach, it can be very helpful. Four and five. Top part goes over the second peg down where the arm is. And we reach into the bottom piece for that wrapped band and connect that to the seventh peg down on that side. Okay. Let's move the legs to the side and we want to look to see which of the sets are going to be on the top under the cap. So we're looking at the eighth peg down in the middle and we're going to reach in with the open part of the hook pointed up and get the two bands that are sitting next in the row there and those are the two that are coming from the right side. We're going to carefully scoop them over and back to where they came from. And I'm just going to loop up this side once. I'll show you it a little closely on the other side so if you missed it there or you can't quite see just watch what we do here and then you can come back to it. Okay, we're going to go inside that cap again, get the next two. And they're going to go to the left side or the side that's closer to me here. And I'm having a hard time just getting those two. We'll grab them one at a time. There we go. Okay, so what I did on the other side and what you're going to do here is we want to look for the bottom two black and they're coming from the peg above. You want to push back everything else. And I'm just holding this to the side to get a better grip. And we're gonna hook that up and forward. And that's what I did over here. So if you didn't quite get that, you can do that now. We're gonna go back to the middle, push back everything but the bottom two. We have one more set and it's coming from the peg above. We want to just loop those forward. And now we're gonna loop up either side. And we're starting at the seventh peg down and just going for the bottom whites. So push back everything but the whites, grab it and loop it forward and place it on top of the peg above. And we'll keep going right until we reach the arm. And watch that you're pushing back the white holding bands and only getting the bottom two whites. 
When you get to the second peg from the top, reach inside for the bottom two weights and bring them to the second peg in the center. Second peg down. Let's loop up the opposite side, grabbing those bottom two whites again. What I love about most of these projects, um, ones like this especially, is that everything's symmetrical. So we have some patterns to work with, um, some, some easier direction. The layout's pretty straightforward uh, and it's a little harder to make mistakes here. Okay, and I've brought the, the white bands from the second peg down on the side to the second peg down on the center. We'll go back to the seventh peg down on the center and loop forward the rest, loop the rest of our whites forward until we reach the top of the loom. Bottom whites only. Okay. Hold on to the bands on the top center peg and you can carefully ease the rest of the body off, starting at the top and the sides and working your way downwards and inwards. And this just helps to ease the tension, keeps your bounds from popping. Even if it does take a little longer. If you see any loose bands, you can try and grab them now, loop them in, fix it up, weave it in, or put it onto a C-clip if all else fails. Let's pop this off. Okay. Uh -uh. Decide which which part you want for the front, and I think, okay, I was going to try and uh, try and hide this from you, but I have a loose band, so I better, you can see I missed one, I better catch that at the back and weave it in. So I'm gonna grab my loose one and hook it to the back. And it's gonna go onto a C-clip. All right, so really ideally you want the front to be the side that doesn't show the little, um, the little knot, holding band, cat band, whatnot, at the at the center of the legs there. Put this on here for the moment, and I'll use that C clip a little bit later. We're going to come back to the loom and work on the head. Okay, we've got two black bands from the top center to the top right. Two black bands from the top center to the top left two black bands coming down together once in the middle row and then we switch to gray bands two bands coming down once on either side and in the center we're going to switch to skin tone and come down three times with double bands and I would recommend a lighter skin tone I'm using sort of the pinky kind right now but you can see I've used the really light one here uh, and it doesn't clash with the white, but it does give them the pale appearance that we want them to have. Now I said three in the center and two sets of double skin tone coming down on either side. We want to meet them in from either side, fourth peg to the center, fifth peg, double bands. Again, from the, the side, the right fourth peg down to the center, fifth peg, double bands. Uh, okay, let's just see what we've got here for holding bands. These are, oh, oh, we have one more thing to do before we put those on. Let's get, we want to have the little tufts of white hair. And those can be gray if that's your preference. So for that, um, I didn't write down what I did, but it looks like we have just one or two. I guess you can choose how thick you want it to be. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, a single white band wrapped five times. And we're gonna pull it onto double white bands. And what we're going to do here, which is why we're doing this before the holding bands, and I'm glad I remembered, pop the, take the top pink or skin tone bands off of the second peg down on the side, and we're going to slide the white bands over those skin tone bands, and then replace the pink. 
I keep calling it that, it's skin tone. The other side, single band, white band wrapped one, two, three, four times, or five. Pull it onto double white bands. And this is gonna go on the opposite side. So pull that second, the band, top skin tone bands off of the second peg down, slide your white on top and replace. And then we're ready to do our, mm, we're ready to put our holding bands on next and then we'll add our couple of features here. So I did not double over the holding bands and I'm not going to this time either. I'm just gonna stretch them across. So we have, oh, this is another thing I should mention. I'm just gonna use white bands here. You might get a good for or a good eyebrow effect if you use gray. I am gonna use gray this time. And then I can leave you a footnote to let you know, or an annotation to let you know whether it works. So I'm gonna put a single gray across the second pegs down, a single skin tone across the third pegs down, and a single skin tone across the fourth pegs down. And if you want his face to be tighter, you can always double those over, but you shouldn't really need to here. For our eyes, I'm gonna show you how you can thread beads onto a band if you are using beads. And this is the same method you, you'll you use if you're putting a bead on for the, the um, metal on his chest, if you have a bead you'd like to use. Okay, so to put beads onto a band, you're gonna take a piece of floss, run it through both beads, put it through a single skin tone band, and bring it back over and press it back through the beads from the opposite direction until they slide on. Now if you're using beads with a larger hole or if you're using bands, you can take your wrap, your bands, wrap each one one, two, three times. Uh, repeat for a second one or a second bead, you can just slide on and transfer both to a skin tone band. This is going on to our third pegs down. So either side will go on um, to one of those and we're going to stretch it across, stretch it apart, put the hook in between and raise one part over the center. For our nose, we have a single skin tone band. We're going to wrap it nice and tight on the hook one, two, three, four, five times. And we're going to put this onto a doubled over single. one's already doubled over, but I'll show you anyway. Stretch, twist, pull it onto itself. You can make the nose longer if you want to, I think. I've got one more set on here. I can't really tell. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, we do have one more set. Okay, so I have one more doubled over single we're gonna put this on. And you can add more doubled over singles if you want the nose to be longer, but this is gonna be a pretty substantially long nose already. And this goes onto a single skin tone band and get stretched across the third pegs down as well. So one so either side will go across there. And we're going to reach pull the nose down a little bit. Find the space between the doubled over band, the last doubled over band there. Just a second. And bring that over. So you sort of want to stretch the nose out and just pull it under the fourth peg down. And now, yeah, we're ready to loop. Let's put our body on. Now you can put the body face up or face down. When I made this guy, I actually put the body on face down and then pressed the face through, but it will it will show up either which way. So, mm, yeah. I'm going to put the body face down because I think my eyes are gonna be a little more prominent on the other side. Now I've got some funny maneuvering to do though. Ah. No, that didn't work. Try it again. <sighs> yep, yeah, I gotta take this off. There. So this is, I neglected to mention here, this is going onto the fifth peg down in the center. 
And if you find this is in the way, you can pull the whole neck piece down onto a nearby peg. I'm having just a terrible time not attaching this here. But either way, once you've got it on, you can reach through the white bands and find the top two pink beyond and bring them to the right side, the far side. I'm gonna loop up to the top of that row. Bottom two pink bands, bottom two pink bands. Don't worry about the white there, you're just gonna loop it normally. And the last two are gray, bring them up. Go back inside the fifth peg down, find the next two skin tone and bring them over to the left. And we can loop up that side, push back everything but the bottom two. And we're gonna bring them forward and keep going until we reach the top. And let's loop up our top sides, top side black bottom two to the center, top center, and the other side. And let's go back to the fifth peg down and last row. Grab your skin tone and just loop them straight forward. Get a black band at the ready or two if you want it to be extra secure. Get it, get it set on your finger here and we're going to take our hook point the open part away from you and push it through the bands on the top center peg grab that securing band you've got at the ready pull it through now our hook is facing up grab the other side and pull one piece over the other to create a slip knot you're going to hold on to that or put it on a hook or a c-clip and carefully remove the head well, and the body, they kind of go together now. I sort of, uh, you know, I like doing this in pieces instead of having the, the whole thing together, it kind of breaks it up and makes it a little less overwhelming. So push your eyes to the side that you want for the front and you can see the gray has shown up as a bit of an eyebrow but if you don't like it so much, you can push the eyes more towards the back. And if you have decided you want the opposite side here to be the face, uh, if you're just gonna separate in the center and use your hook or fingers to press the nose right through, okay? But I'm gonna leave this as it is. We're gonna turn it around, put the hook through a couple of nearby bands to grab the securing band and pull that through and that's gonna go onto a C-clip. For now, I'm just gonna weave it down to the C-clip that I already have in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. And we've got just a couple more pieces to do. So let's do our gray one next. This is a little bit trickier, just um, some maneuvering. We're gonna take a single, wrap it once, um, once and twice, and pull it onto four sets of double gray bands. And I'll remind you again, you're welcome to use red hair or a different color of your choice. It's kind of the beauty of black and white television. You get to imagine what the colors might really have been. Four. And we're gonna do another of these and get it ready on the hook. Single wrapped once and twice, pulled onto four double gray bands. Or double sets of gray bands. And four. Okay, let's put this down for a second. Now we're gonna take a single gray band, two if you want it to be extra, extra stable, and slide it through both of the chains that you just made. Put the other end over and slide one side over the other, and you can put this onto a C-clip. Stretch it out a little bit and bring it around from behind, around behind the neck. You can just hold it here with your finger for a minute. 
Now take your hook and you're gonna count down one, two, three sets of chains on the chest. And you're gonna bring your hook through from the back. And then you want to get a hold of either one or all three of the bottom piece of your cat band on one side of the chain and pull it to the back. And for now, I'm just gonna take another gray band and slide it through. This will ease a little bit of our tension. I'm gonna hold onto that with another hook for the moment, or you can use a C-clip or another band or whatnot. Let's make sure this is back around the neck. And I'm gonna reach through in the same spot. This is where it gets just a little bit dicey. And grab the tail end of the opposite side. And we're gonna pull this through. And let me mm -mm. I'll release the other side, the one that we've got that loose band through. I'm going to take that off for a minute. And we'll put that back onto the hook and slide this through the opposite piece. You can pull one side over the other and we can weave it in to connect with one of our C-clips or you can use a C-clip that um, a new C-clip. This looks like it's coming loose. Let's slip that back on a little more sturdily. Okay, so the medallion, we'll do that next. You can use a band and put it onto another band the way that I showed you for the eyes, or you can take a gold band, wrap it about four times so it's nice and tight, and this can go onto a single gray band. So if you're using a bead, you would just put your bead onto that single gray. I'm gonna hold on to that, reach through from the back, right where we finished that kind of collar piece. Take one side of the band with the bead on it or your gold band on it, pull it through and reach through one more time. Now, if you're having a hard time with this, you can always put the back piece onto another hook or a C-clip or just something to get it out of the way. We're pulling this through. So whether it's a band or a bead, you're just gonna secure it that same way. Pull one side over the other and this goes onto your C-clip as well. Feel free to use extra C-clips. I know um, you get a lot with this set. So the very last thing, and this is optional, but I'm gonna do it because I wanna stick, stick as close to the original as I can. So we're gonna make this little bow. And for that, we're taking a single band, wrapping it one, two, three times, putting it onto a double dover, and this is white incidentally. And replace, make another one for the opposite side. That's a skin tone. I think that's a skin tone. One, two, three, four. That got in with my weights is what I'm saying onto a doubled over white. We're gonna take both of these and put them onto a single white band. You can double it over if you if you feel comfortable with that. We'll make it sit a little tighter. I'm just gonna do it a single for now. And we want to grab both sides on a hook or a finger or whatnot, get them ready. And we're just gonna, we're gonna go through from the back, just above where that gray is. You can do it a little higher if you want, I suppose. Mm. Grab the ends of that white bow piece. If you are having a hard time getting both, you can pull one side over the other into a slip knot and then pull it through. And I totally just botched that. Let's try that again. Mm -mm. I like to keep a little tension on it when I'm pulling and then you can, can feel that there's good resistance. And we're gonna put this on a C-clip. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use a new one here, but you can reuse some if you've got an extra one handy. And there he is all done. So really the only difference here is this guy's legs are a little bit thinner, but otherwise you can see in either case, we've made some pretty cool grandpa Munsters here. I have Eddie Munster, an Eddie Munster tutorial out already, and I hope to get more for you soon. And thank you for watching.